Hey there everyone, Zach from Cobra Frame Building here and today we are going to be talking about the Argon Back Purge Kit available for the Creator Frame Fixture. So whether you're an early adopter or you've recently received your fixture or you might pick one up in the future, every fixture shipped from the shop comes ready to accept this kit. In this video we're going to touch on why you may want this kit and how do you install it. Let's get into it. Alright, so what is back purging anyway and why do we do it? Well. Most of you are familiar with the fact that your TIG torch is actually supplying the outside of the weld with that argon shielding gas. Now, this shielding gas is super important because it actually protects our molten weld pool from contamination of elements in the atmosphere. What we're doing with back purging is basically the same thing, but on the inside of the frame. We're displacing that atmosphere and replacing it with an inert argon gas. Now, you can absolutely build a quality 4130 chrome moly steel frame without back purging. This does become essential though when we're working with corrosion resistant materials like titanium or stainless steel. When you actually try to weld up a frame with titanium or stainless tubes and you are not using an argon back purge system, you're actually allowing that weld to oxidize on the inside. Now, when a corrosion resistant material oxidizes, it's no longer corrosion resistant and you actually weaken the structure of the material, which ultimately can lead to weld failure and we all know we don't want that on our bikes. So if you are looking to build with titanium, this is something you absolutely need to add to your fixture to get the most out of it and produce a quality result. So let's get into the different components that are included in this kit. All right, so when it comes to assembling, there's only gonna be a handful of components that we need. In your kit, you're gonna receive about 30 feet of push to connect six millimeter tubing. We are going to have this switch plate and your switch with your push to connect fittings already installed. Now this is specific to drive side in and drive side out, so let us know which one you need. We're going to have our manifold and we are going to have our 90 degree uh, push to connect fittings that we're actually going to use to connect all of our argon tubes to the various portions of our system. All right, so the first thing we have here is our switch plate. We've already got everything mounted up. It should come that way in your kit. We've got two M8 socket head cap screws that are going to bolt to the back side of the C2 plate uh, through your switch plate. And these are gonna be on the head tube side. So once we have these in, no need to get these super tight. We're just gonna get them snugged up so it stays in place. And we're going to begin to actually install our 90 degree fittings uh, on our various portions of the fixture. So to install these, we're just gonna simply screw them in from the underside of the head tube and to the top of the head tube, as well as the top of the seat tube and the bottom bracket post. So we're just gonna get these in here. We're not worried about getting them too tight. Everything is going to be adjusted in the next steps here. And when we get to the bottom bracket post, it makes it a lot simpler if we just come in and rotate our fixture up and you will see that there is a port on the bottom side of our post that we can go ahead and install this. All right, so the next thing that I like to do is actually double stick tape the manifold onto the back side of the main extrusion. Just use a little bit of double stick tape. We're gonna put it on the back side of our manifold and I'm gonna bump this right up against our mount plate for our uh, stand here and we're going to make it so that the flat side of this is going to be bumped against the plate and our ports will be facing towards the head tube. So now we're actually getting into fitting our tubing. We've got our switch installed, we've got our manifold installed, and the first thing I like to do is to cut a nice short and tidy line from the top side of our switch to this first side port on the manifold. So I'm gonna just basically start by tucking one end of my push to connect fitting into the top side of our switch and I'm just going to bring it up so that I've got a little bit of slack and trim this here. Now, this is gonna be a fixed length, so we don't need to worry about this part moving and growing. This line is never really gonna move from this area, so we can just go ahead and pop this one in. Now, the next one I like to do is actually going to be leading from the bottom side of our manifold down to our port on our bottom bracket post. So again, very similar process. I'm gonna find the end of my tubing here and we're gonna plug into the bottom side of our manifold. I like to kind of run it along the line of 
the tubing going from the switch to the manifold just to keep things a little bit neater. Bring it around to the bottom bracket and go ahead and cut it there as well. Again, this is going to be another portion where it's not going to change in length no matter where you have it on position. So you can keep these pretty short and tidy. So the next thing I like to do is actually run the hose from the top of the manifold to the top of the C-tube cone. Now this is going to be a moving part. It's going to be moving up and down as well as forward and back. So we want to make sure that we give ourselves a little bit of room. Though that being said, we want to keep this as clean as possible while still reserving enough extra room in our hose to make all of our movement. I'm going to go ahead, plug this into the top of our manifold, run it up, and I like to actually use a little piece of masking tape just to kind of hold things in place so I can kind of test my movement, see if I have everything that I need, and go from there. Now I've turned the fixture around so we can see the front half here. Now, once we have this hose coming up, I'm going to kind of arc it down and make sure that it can get full travel to the top, but then also make it down here. Now, we can actually take another piece of masking tape and basically tape this hose right to the C-tube support. When we do this, this is going to allow us to run this through a range of motion to make sure that we are going to have enough slack to achieve all of our desired adjustments. So if you feel confident that you've got enough movement and everything seems to be moving free and clear, we can go ahead and cut this tube and install it into the top. So before we actually run the lines to the top and bottom of the head tube, I have extended them to basically the full max travel of the fixture. This is going to make sure that in the longest position we do have enough hose, but we are also going to want to then be able to bring it back and have enough slack. Now we're going to give it a little bit of slack even though it is in the top position because we're not going to anchor this all the way to the end. We do want to make sure we can get to about here so that we have enough to move back and forth across the fixture without any excessive tubing. So we're going to come in here, we're going to plug right into the manifold and run this up through our T-slot and bring this up to the top of our head tube. Now, just as before, we can take a little piece of masking tape to get it held in place while we run the fixture through its range of motion. So from this position, we are able to reach all the way in. We are able to bring this all the way down. And again, we can bring it all the way back out again. So I'm feeling pretty confident with that length. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that and we're going to get started on the lower head tube. So now we're gonna repeat the same process for the lower head tube. So again, we're gonna use our final hole in the manifold and again, run this through the T-slot. We're gonna use the one just below the last and kind of get our position set. Tape this in place and check our range of motion. So we're gonna move our stop up here. Make sure we have enough slack. Now I do want to run this on the outside of here. And it does seem like we have plenty of room still. And then I'm also going to run this all the way in. I want to make sure we are going to anchor this roughly six to eight inches from the back side of the extrusion here. So I'm going to hold it in place and I can make it all the way in so we do have sufficient room. I'm going to go ahead and cut this and then we're going to get into a little bit of the tubing management just to kind of tidy things up a little bit. All right, so I've already done the top line here and I'm just tidying up this hose. Uh, what I really like to do, as you can see, is just to put zip ties on the hose itself. I'm not strapping these to anything, I'm just wrapping them around the hose. Now when I'm doing this, it's really just to acquire a little bit of a tail on these zip ties so that we can kind of snap these all into place. So once we have all of those on there, we're going to go ahead and actually cut them 
So that they're about a quarter of an inch, maybe three eighths of an inch long. Uh, it doesn't have to be that precise. If they're too long, you can always cut them back. And if they're not long enough to hold the, the hose into your T-slot, you can always just put new ones on. But once we have those cut, we can just come in, kind of tow them in, and snap them into place right inside of our T-slots on our extrusion. This is gonna keep things nice and tidy, kind of hide that hose in those slots and make it look nice and clean. All right, so almost done. We're just gonna tuck our hose on the head tube side of our C-tube extrusion and get this looking nice and clean. Once we have these snapped into place, there we go. Then we are ready to do our final connections. All right, so pretty much the last thing that we have to do is actually hook up our argon supply. Now, our argon tank here right now is running to our welder. Some of you may want to set up a dual regulator setup, or you may want to have a separate bottle specifically for your back purging. Now, we're not going to go into how to set this part up because it is going to be different for everyone, depending on what fittings you have, what regulators you have. The main thing is, once you do have everything set up on the fixture and you have attached your argon tubing to your argon tank, whether that be, again, its own separate tank or a dual regulator, we can then go ahead and plug the other side directly into the bottom side of the switch on our switch plate. All right, just like that, our kit is installed. We are set to go. Now, we've gone through and made sure everything moves nice and freely. We've got plenty of slack in all of our lines and it looks darn good too. We've gone through and snugged up our fittings just enough to hold them in place, and the only thing really left to do at this point is to load this thing with some tubes and build a frame. When you're ready to go, all you need to do is flip that switch, and it is ready to start purging gas into your frame. Now, as always, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out. We'd be more than happy to answer them, and we may potentially have some build series coming in the future, so if that's something you're interested in, go ahead, like, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.